Namaskaram. In this session, we will discuss limit and continuity of a complex function. In real calculus, x tends to x0 only through two sides, either from left or right. But in the case of complex analysis, z tends to z0 through any direction in plane. So the limiting process of complex function is a bit different from real calculus. So in this session, I will explain more problems for clarity. Okay, let's start. This is the solution of previous homework. Let f of z be a function defined in a neighborhood s of a point z0, except possibly at z0 itself. The function f of z is said to have the limit l as z approaches to z0 if the values of f are close to l. For all z close to z0. This is our z0, this is our l. This means whenever z is close to z0, whatever be the direction, f of z is close to l. This is our f of z. So whenever z is very close to z0, f of z is very close to l. z can approach through any direction. In the real case, x can approach x0 only two directions, either from left or from right. So this is the mathematical definition of limit. For a given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0. So this delta depends epsilon, right? Such that modulus of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Whenever modulus of z minus z0 is less than delta. This means whenever distance between z and z0 is less than some delta, then uh, distance between f of z and l is less than a predefined quantity epsilon. So if epsilon is very small, so automatically f of z is very close to l, right? Then what is the geometry, geometry of this definition? Then this is the definition for a given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0. Whenever distance between z and z0 is less than delta, then the distance between f of z and l is less than epsilon. This epsilon is predefined. Geometrically, this means yeah, we have two points z0 and l. So for a given epsilon greater than 0, yes, this is our epsilon and epsilon is positive. So this is the length of epsilon. There exists a delta that is also positive. And what is our next condition? Suppose distance between z and z0 is less than delta. Okay, we know that this is an open circular disk. Okay, that means z lies an open disk with the radius delta. So, suppose z is inside this disk, right? So, here the distance between z and z0 is less than delta. The next is the distance between f of z and l is less than epsilon. That means f of z is inside this epsilon neighborhood. Then what happened is epsilon is arbitrary. If you choose epsilon is very small, then automatically f of z is very close to l. So this mathematical definition is consistent with the, the definition of limit. This is a remark. If limit exists, then it is unique. This is your class project, which means the entire class can work as a single team. And one of you should present the solution as a video. We will publish it. Okay. Okay, next definition. A function f of z is said to be continuous at z0 if limit z tend to z0 f of z exists and that is equal to f of z0. Next one, continuity in a domain. A function f of z is said to be continuous in a domain if it is continuous at each point of this domain. Okay, consider a problem. Check whether f of z is equal to real part of z square by mod z when z0 equal to 0 and 0 when z equal to 0 is continuous at z equal to 0. First, we have to find limit z tends to 0 f of z. We are going to solve this problem using polar coordinates. So, we know that the polar representation of z is equal to r e raised to i theta. So, what is z square? z square equal to r square e raised to i 2 theta. Right. And what is the real part of z square? So, real part of this is e raised to i theta that is cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta. So its real part is so real part of z square is r square cos 2 theta. Right. And what is mod z? We know that mod z is nothing, it is r. 
So this can be written as So this is zero. This is our reset. Whenever z is tends to zero, then it is clear that the distance between the origin and z is also tends to zero. That means whenever z tends to zero, r also tends to zero. So this is equal to limit r tends to zero. R is not equal to zero, only tending to zero. So you can cancel one r. So this becomes r cos two theta. This theta depends the direction of z, right? Whatever be the direction of convergence, this r is always tends to zero, and cos theta is a finite number. So this product is tends to zero. Clear? So limit is at tends to zero, f of z equal to zero. And what is f of zero? That is given zero. So it is clear that limit is at tends to zero, f of z equal to f of zero. So our function is continuous at z equal to zero. Limit exists. And equal to f of zero. Clear. Consider another problem. Check whether this function is continuous at z equal to zero. So we know that. So imaginary part of z square equal to r square into sine two theta, right? We have to find the limit. So z is never zero. Z only tending to zero. So whenever z is not equal to zero, this is our function. And this is equal to if z is tends to zero, then if it is it is clear that mod z also tends to zero. Mod z is our r, so you can write this as what is imaginary of z square? That is r square sine sine two theta. This is mod z square. Mod z is r, so this is r square. So this is equal to okay. What about this limit? This limit doesn't exist because this limit depends. The position of z, right? This theta is the argument of z. For example, if z is tending to z not through y equal to x, then theta is pi by four. Okay, so the limit is sine two into pi by four, that is sine pi by two. Suppose z is tending to zero through x axis, positive x axis, then theta is always zero. So here sine zero is zero, so this limiting value is zero. Okay, so if z is tending to zero through y equal to x. Then limiting value is sine pi by two, that is one. If z is tending to zero through positive x-axis, then limiting value is sine zero, that is zero. So they are not equal. Okay, so limit doesn't exist. So this function is not continuous. So limit does not exist, and it is not continuous. That is it. At the, at zero. Okay, next we have to check whether this function is continuous at z equal to zero. Either you can solve this problem using polar form or using Cartesian form. The polar form is already we have discussed. That is, <clears throat> we know that the polar form of z is series to r series to y theta, and what is mod z? Mod z equal to r. So what is z? That is r series to y theta by by mod z. That is r. So this is equal to limit z tends to zero series to y theta. And what about this? This limit depends theta, that is direction of z. Okay, so limit doesn't exist. If z tends to zero through y equal to x, then answer is e raised to i pi by four. If z is tends to zero through positive real axis, the limit is e raised to zero, that is one. They are not equal, so limit doesn't exist. This is the one method. Other method you can solve this problem using in Cartesian form. That means. What is z in Cartesian form? That is x plus i y. What is mod z? Suppose we assume that z tends to zero through y is equal to m x. So what about this ratio? So the ratio become replacing y by m x. X tends to zero, right? Because z tends to zero means that is equivalent to x tends to zero. Because now z is in terms of x. So x is common. You can take out say here x square is common, but there is a square root. So this become so this is equal to the limiting value is equal to one plus i m by okay. This depends the slope of the straight line. Okay. So what is the conclusion? Conclusion is limit doesn't exist.
because limit depends the path of convergence right so limit does not exist so it is not continuous okay next problem show that limit z tends to 0 x square y by x raised to 4 plus y square does not exist even though this function approaches the same limit along every straight line through origin so what is the equation of straight line passing through origin that is y is equal to mx so this contains set of all straight lines passing through origin except one x equal to 0 and what about z if y is equal to mx then z is equal to x plus i y that is equal to x plus i into mx so this is equal to x into 1 plus i m z tends to 0 means this implies x tends to 0 so this limit become limit z tends to 0 that is x tends to 0 x square y is mx divided by so this is the value of the function on the straight line y is equal to mx so this is equal to again this is equal to and what about limit if m is not equal to 0 and x tends to 0 then numerator tends to 0 and denominator is number greater than m square so the whole quantity tends to 0 if m equal to 0 then 0 by a non zero number okay 0 by a non zero number that also 0 okay so whatever the value of m this limiting value is always 0 then the next case is suppose x equal to 0 x equal to 0 means y axis suppose z tends to 0 through y axis and x equal to 0 this become limit z tends to 0 0 by y square so whatever be the value of y this ratio is always 0 so limiting value is 0 okay so in both the cases the limiting value is 0 so the limit of this function through any straight line is always equal to 0 next we consider the limit through y is equal to mx square then what about this limit so limit is a tends to 0 x square replacing y by mx square so mx square divided by x raised to 4 plus uh, y square y square is m square x raised to 4 here x raised to 4 is common you can cancel so this become limit is a tends to 0 m y 1 plus m square so this is equal to m y 1 plus m square so this limit depends this m so limit does not exist this is your homework in next session we will discuss differentiability and analyticity of a complex function okay thank you